Yo, perps and twerps, and welcome to Gone Rogue, an isometric cat burglar RPG set in an Orwellian police state. That's probably the first time you've heard such a phrase. This game was brought to my attention by viewer Paulo Caesar about 10 days ago, and it was released less than two weeks ago. This is a stealth game, of course, so I'm no stranger to the stealth. We'll be playing it on hard difficulty. Let's go and get started, and this game can show you exactly what it's about. War. Senseless slaughter. Lasting for decades, cannot but disfigure our whole world. The war turned the state into an ideal conveyor belt for turning people into cannon fodder. We didn't even notice how slogans overshadowed feelings. Orders replaced logic. Doubt became betrayal, and ideology became truth. It's the perfect time for the reign of hypocrisy and lies. But at the same time, I feel that the state is declining. Hunger, disease, suffering, and death. That's all I see around me. For me, sneaking around the streets at night in search of food has already become a habit. Although this time, I decided to act big. Big. All right, Jack, how are you going to act big? Butcher shop. A butcher shop at the very edge of the city slums. The owner is a rude, nasty type who sells meat of a similar quality. But because of the surprisingly affordable prices, the shop is in great demand throughout the quarter. Your main goal, to rob the cash register within the butcher shop. Your additional goal is to steal more than 75 state dollars in, well, whatever sort of capacity you can. Normally, we'd be able to choose a loadout, but this is a tutorial, so of course we're thrown right into the action. You're going to see with this game, you know, it, it has a lot of fallout, not just the perspective. We have all the normal camera controls. I don't need to tell you that. I'm moving around with the Waz right now. I'm running by holding down shift. We can lock the camera on Jack. Some characters are not actually hostile. They're just homeless people, beggars. The unfortunates of our society, that now is going to show us that we can jump on top of boxes, as I'm demonstrating now. And yes, we can run by holding shift. Now, as we get over here, let's go ahead and pause the game, because we can do that. And we'll take a look at some of our HUD. We have Jack here in semi-darkness. Now, this is not Splinter Cell. Being in darkness does not make you invisible. It just makes it slower for you to be spotted. Since I'm in semi-darkness, it takes them a little bit of time. We also have concentration. Let me go and move that back up. Concentration determines the speed of your burglaries and pickpocketing. Whenever you do difficult things, this concentration reserve is reduced by one, and it also slows you down when it does so. Right now, we're at perfect health as far as concentration is concerned. We want to slow down here because if we run, this little guy's going to hear us, and I don't want him to hear us because I'm going to pick his pocket. Do not, do not alter your position, sir. It interrupts the pickpocketing. Now you'll notice this little meter here. Whenever he notices we are within his personal bubble for too long, he will become downright irritable and inconsolable. So we need to go ahead and give him some space until they goes ahead and cools down. Because that's just how things work in society, right? Anyway, let's cool down. Let's go ahead and see what we can find. You'll notice that we keep our progress. It's like, how does that work? Well, you know, we know which pockets are empty and which ones have stuff in them. Let's not run yet. Jack is a big old noisy boy right now. We have this guy up here, a blind man. Let's go talk to him. Oh, come, sir. I recognize the gait of a member of the highest party, am I right? Yeah, you are. I'm a non-pals. Oh, it is a pity I would have polished your shoes. And for free. Why would you do it for free? Oh, tell you a secret. To shame the servants of the party, of course. Everyone knows that all who have polished shoes are absolute crap. So, I'm unmasking them publicly. It's a clever idea, yes. Oh, thank you, sir. Eh, can I help you with something? Uh, Mr. Blind Man, maybe get you some foods? Oh, there's no need. At night, I sneak into the yard not far from here, where I can always profit from meat scraps in the pit. But I feel that it is in your power to help me with another trouble. Yeah, I'm listening. Recently, an old friend and me... We were very drunk, you see, and 
When I woke up and sobered up, I had found that me combat metal, it was gone. First I thought that my friend had stolen it, but he said that when we ran out of money, and of course I believed him in all this, uh, when we were drinking the booze, I crawled to the nearest shop, and I pawned off me metal to buy some more booze. My bad head, I don't remember any of that. But he does somehow, even though he was drinking. What's up with that? Anyway, since then, I've completely sworn off all booze. I think the butcher still has me metal, and he's definitely not going to give it back to me. But maybe you can try to pick it up. Eh, yeah, why you need this metal? It's practically weightless. It's probably made out of plastic. Oh, here the matter is different. The metal constantly reminded me of something. Well, of course, the war, about me comrades in arms and all that, but most importantly, it reminded me of who I really am. You see, it was covering up some kind of emptiness in me chest. Now that it is gone, something evil and dreary is constantly rushing out and saying that I'm a useless cripple. So, I'm asking, not asking you to return me metal, but to return me feelings, me memory, and me pride. Give me back me spirit. Alright, I'll get you spirit. Just wait on you. I will wait. And he will. So let's go ahead and get going. We have all sorts of stuff to look at, but first let's look at that pit, shall we? That pit where he's getting all of his meat. What the hell's in that? Well, we got some meat. Some rotten meat. There's also, um, probably hard to see here, but there's some, you know, corpses, uh, you know? That's unsanitary. Looks like someone's put corpses in here. That's unfortunate. Here comes some dude. We're not going to worry about him. He's not a problem. We can also turn out lights if we want, which is, you know, it, it can change the ambiance to our uh, to our benefit. We have found a crowbar. My goodness. And now we can use that very crowbar to start jacking open things. You see what I did there? So we'll go ahead and do so. It's in our interest to do this at every possible opportunity. Why? Because of how character progression goes in this game. I did say it's an RPG, and it works very much like Fallout. The skills that level up are the ones that you use. So right there, we used our crowbar, which will level up Rough Break It. We can get perk points whenever we complete quests, and those can give us additional benefits, like Intruder here, where we can get into doors and windows 50% faster. That's pretty good. We can carry more stuff. Breaking speed's increased. We can get Lard, which... It doesn't say that, but we'll get lard. Some of these you only get to see once you've reached a certain progression level, as demonstrated here. We'll look at that more in depth later. We also have a journal, which tells us what we're doing. You can enjoy those there. We also have our subquests that we just picked up from that veteran. Let's see, there should be another... There we are. I would like that crowbar. Thank you. All right, we're done here for now. We'll be back here later to pick up some stuff, but... We need to get to our main objective, all right? You'll notice that tools have a duration. We had seven more uses on that crowbar. We can also speed up these burglaries or these actions by pressing X, and I'll do so constantly. Because there's no reason not to. Go and enter. And let's go ahead and flick off the light. We get a free save there, which is nice. Let's go ahead and get that registered. Oh, oopsie dude! you can't go through that lock because, you know, it's not state-sanctioned crowbarable. We need to find a key for that. Who's going to have the key? Probably the butcher. We can pause with space. There's another light switch up here. There's no reason not to turn off lights unless someone is in the room with you because, understandably, they might notice. Here he is, the butcher. He is spinning in place. Right here, you can see the noise level on this crowbar. He's barely within it, so we'll just go ahead and give him a moment. And we'll go ahead and start jacking this open. It's nice that it shows us that. Let's go ahead and speed that up real quick. We'll want to do this just because it'll make things easier. Uh, let's go ahead and start jacking this open. He's going to get up. Let's go ahead and disengage from that so he doesn't hear it. That'd be pretty unfortunate if he did. Let's go and hit that switch. You'll, you may notice he has a key on him. We're going to go and get that key off him. Do, do, do. Just like the patrolman outside, he has a personal bubble. But he's a little easier to pickpocket than a patrolman, understandably so. Grab the key. Time to drop that register. You want to have doors closed because if characters see they are, you know, open and closing 
in their vicinity, they understandably get upset. And we do not want them to be upset. All right, let's go ahead and go over here. Use the key. All right, let's go ahead and get to this register, shall we? Thankfully, that is state-mandated, you know, crowbarable. We have the time here. And just be ready to move. Just in case... I mean, he wasn't going to come down here, right? We're all good. Oh, no, he's coming down here. Somehow I know. You notice that Jack has a big advantage over a lot of stealth game pro tags, as that he kind of sees everything as long as it's on his own Z level. You also may be wondering... Did he hear it, Lethal? Did he hear when you were, you know, jacking with that thing? No, he did not. Sounds only progress through the same Z level. So if we're on a different floor than him, he doesn't hear a goddamn thing, which is nice. Very nice. It takes away some of the complication of sometimes a very obnoxious game. There's also a newspaper there. Why don't we go take a look at that, shall we? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Let's see. Weekly Bulletin. Because of the mass of past mistakes, mediocre politicians allowed poverty, famine, illiteracy, and the collapse of industry. It was it was they who started the Great War. Yes, this deserves contempt. But we deserve even more contempt if we allow ourselves to make the same mistakes. Society of the past was mired with dispute and conflict, and therefore weak. So we must be united. We must be faithful to the will of the Supreme Committee. Everyone, without exception, must work for the good of the state. And no one will be able to threaten us anymore, neither external nor internal enemies. Division is weakness. Unity is strength. The party is eternal. This has been your weekly bulletin, just in case you forgot. <laughs> All of that. Let's go ahead and jack this open. He'll be out of the nose radius. Noise radius, not nose radius, by the time I get over there. There's some other things for us to pick up, but we already got our main quest done. Yeah, if we look at here, and I've been pressing Alt to get our Thiepo vision. We can also just look on things if we hover over them. Those hot peppers are worth picking up. One mistake you might make when you go in here is like picking up this main one. Like you probably, you may have noticed I didn't pick up that earlier. If he sees those are missing, and I'm going to steal these later, he will become upset because he knew they were there. Come on, Jack, get moving. I want to get up there before he starts moving again. Okay, good, he hasn't. We still have more things to steal. We still need to get that man's pride back, or his spirit, as it were. And we're definitely going to do that. Let's go and wait for him to move. He's going to go look at his clock. And then he'll progress out of the room. We also haven't used a save. Why don't we use a save right here? You'll notice that we have limited amounts of save. He's on the other Z level. We're cheesing it. Although we didn't have much room to cheese it in. As some, you know, as is often the case. Alright, let's progress inside. There's some other things for us to mess with in here. That one's unlocked. That one's locked. And also this is locked. So let's go ahead and work on this since it's closest. Do, 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 do. Keep an eye on those stairs. All right, now I want you to get into this. We'll take that ring. Sure. Just make sure that you haven't forgot what I want you to do. Do, 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 What do we got? We got a jacket. We got some gloves. We'll go ahead and take all that. Let's see what else we got in here. We also have a letter to read once he gets back up here. Some underpantaroos. We'll take those. We also have a veteran's medal. Which is, of course, for our little sub-quest. Butcher's angry letter. Bobby, the deliveries of meat products are delayed again. My counters are almost empty as the pit in the garden. Either your people get me two dozen meat carcasses before sundown, or I have to find some new suppliers. P.S. And try to find some fresher meat. The smell of the dead meat is starting to hate my business. So the way that uh, is in scare quotes probably gives you some clues. I say, I watched Death Evan play a game with a similar sort of gimmick not too long ago. Oh, that was interesting. I don't know if you saw that, but, like, there's some sort of weird portion of the floor there. Let's run out of here real quick. Let's go and get this jacked open while he is doing that. Let's use our other crowbar. Things are going slower because nowadays my concentration's down, so my speeds are down to 20%. 
just in case you were wondering. Just in time. Get some cologne party beauty and get some more underpantaroos. Let's go and make sure that closes. <laughs> we don't want to have the door open. He'll be upset. All right, so we still have at least one thing in there. There's also some money I'd like to grab. There's some beer. All right, run, Jack. Run for the good of the city. Or at least the good of our bank account. All right, what's in there? We have some forward march, a drug, which is usable. Some food stamp, which we can actually give to some people. That's effectively just more money. And a seal. Neat. What's in here? We'll also grab that money off the desk before I leave. We have a usable lard, and I'll show you what that does plenty of times in this game. Let's grab the money. Let's grab this. Anything else in the room? I don't think so. I think we're good. So we're going to go ahead and vamoose over here. Vamoose, Jack. I'm holding down ship for a reason. But I want you to actually move quickly. Now you'll note, as soon as he gets up here, so I'll speed up time, that he's going to notice the cash has gone from the table. Oh my god. We're going to see our alarm go up here. This is all for demonstrative purposes. That's what I'm telling you all. It's all where to, where to go. Oh my god. Do, 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 While he's pondering where that's gone off to, let's go ahead and steal a few more things while we're in here, okay? I want to get this hot pepper. That can be useful for later. Go and run over here. Come on, Jack. There's some other stuff in there, like rotten meat. I don't care about that. I would like to steal his nice cleaver here. And this meat here, which is one of the fresh pieces of meat in the shop. Can you please pick it up, Jack? <laughs> oh, goodness. Uh, let's go, 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 go. Go, Jack! That was the... Jack, why are you not moving? Over the counter, sir. You piece of dog shit. Sometimes the controls in this game can be a little stupid. He's going to go and turn on the lights. You notice that it's going up here. It's not that big a deal. Again, all for demonstrative purposes, the lethal's not in any, you know, real danger. He's also going to notice that's gone, which is unfortunate, but that can happen. All right, let's go ahead and duck down here. You'll notice that we have less visibility. Jack, please don't run. All right, he's none the wiser, and we're out of here. I have a letter out here. Let's go read this one before we leave. There's no sense of urgency, clearly. Notification of civil court to Susan Bones. On September 10th, 1964, your husband, Thomas Bones, was sentenced to death on the day the sentence was carried out. Miss Bones, you have the responsibility to pay for the work of the investigators, the court costs, and the execution of the sentence. The amount to be paid is 67.5 state dollars. Good day. What a nice society that they live in. Anyway, let's go ahead and get back in here. And let's go ahead and start picking up some things. Also, while we have this moment together, we're going to use our time to actually grind up more skills. It's in your interest, especially in these early, le early levels, to just jack open everything you can find, because that's just free experience. Also, you can't speed up time when he's just walking there. He has to be interacting with it first. But yeah, you might as well get free experience. We'll go talk to our friend, Mr. Blind Man, in a moment. Uh, still doing all right there. My concentration hasn't waned any further. There it goes. Ooh, we also have this to break into. Grab that wine. Last bit of free experience here. Then we'll get out of here. Also pick up all this garbage. Yeah, free money. Free hot pepper, more food stamps. Put that in the old pockets. All right, let's grab ourselves some canned food. More canned food. This is just free money, just laying around collecting dust. No one's getting that. All right, let's click on the windows. Otherwise, he will not go through them. Are you going to come back here? No, I think he's just going to stand over there now. The way this game works is sometimes in scripting events, since we've interacted with the butcher and everything, they've changed their path. Do you have me, Metal? Ah, oh, here it is. He picks up the metal and tremblingly feels it. Yes, this is it. I feel much better now. My spirit is with me again. 
Thank you, kind man. You won't find people like you during the day with a fire. Where would... There would be more such decent people, and our state would flourish with renewed vigor. Eh, just glad I could help. I've decided not to let you go empty-handed. I have one bottle here. He takes a bottle from out of the pile of garbage and hands it to Jack. Only a singular bottle, mind you. I don't need any more. You'll find it more useful. Alright, thanks for the gift. So we got two bottles. That's why I was like, what do you mean one bottle? Let's look at a few of these things. We have our forward march, which we got from one of the cabinets upstairs. It's a drug that, uh, you know, is used on the front lines during defensive operations and long walks. Increases stamina, uh, dulls fear, and also prevents falling asleep. It makes Jack move faster and not make any noise somehow. Don't ask how. Here's our lard. This allows you to have reduced noise when doing a break-in. It's pretty much essential on later uh, later burglaries, robberies. This is one of the things he gave us, a tincture cat's eye. It's a product made by local healers. Briefly improves perception and visual, um, visual acuity. It allows you to see stuff in people's pockets and also furniture. It's all right. Similar to another ability, another perk we could unlock. And we have a tincture of astral chakra. It's also made by local he <laughs> healers. It gives you complete calm and nirvana. That's, that's pretty good. It also, you know, gives you maximum concentration, which during longer robberies is pretty swell. Pretty swell. And also, I think that's the alarm level. It says level of anxiety. I'm pretty sure that's the alarm level. Anyway, uh, that's all the stuff we have in here. We have a bunch of other stuff that we picked up. Now this stuff's really important. It does have its little flavor text, but whatever. No one cares about that. Let's go ahead and get moving. It's time to go home. We've done what we wanted to do in this level. Let's use one of our precious saves. Let me see if I can run over here and jack this truck open. Check, 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 check with my reduced ability. Oh, everyone's everyone's congregating in my direction. Let's go ahead and congregate away from them. I'm not sure where that guy's going. They can see through that truck, though. It's really bastardly. Yeah, I don't think he's walking over here. Get out of here, you. There you go. All right, back to business. He's going to progress up there. Let's we'll see if I can get this open before he returns. There we go. These need to get tunnel vision in this game, by the way. Machine oil. Run, Jack. Keep running. I think we can make it all the way back. No problem. He's still just jacking off doing there. Doing God knows what. That car is not jackable. Let's go ahead and leave. 12 minutes, 28 seconds of non-stop stealth, you know, covert action. We get five stars. This is mostly determined by how much stuff you steal, as far as I've seen. That's the main thing that matters. It might be affected by alarm level, but I've never had my alarm level that high. Ours was at a, a whopping nine. 322 state bucks worth of stuff. We read all the notes. It shows you, like, if your alarm level gets to 100, you just strip failed mission, by the way. That's just how it works. There's a tax. What could that mean? And like I kind of described earlier, the skills that you use are the ones that are developed, which is a sensical way of doing things. That's why we have additional notes on how Raider Mastery works. If you do go the path of brute force, uh, you can attack hostile characters and temporarily ne neutralize them. Uh, of course, if it goes up too fast, then your Thief Mastery here will not go up as quickly. So something to think about. We have our special actions, which are just our, you know, side quests that we may get before or during a mission, as was demonstrated here. Anyway, let's go ahead and continue, question mark. Complete the mission. My first outing was surprisingly successful. Now I can live for a few more days without annoying thoughts about hunger and death. Half a year ago, I worked as a technician at a factory. I was an exemplary family man and an activist, and my head was full of shit. Slogans, chants, patriotism, and willingness to give my life for the good of the state. In general, I lived in blissful ignorance. But one ridiculous mistake, and my whole world collapsed. He dropped a wrench. Suspicion of subversion and espionage, daily interrogations, 
suspicious looks from others. It was only thanks to chance and good characteristics that I was able to avoid prison, but this did not save me from being fired with the lifelong stigma of unreliable element. All my slogans and chants were shattered, barely colliding with the reverse side of our state. I lost everything. My job, apartment, and status. That's when Carl came into my life. Thanks to him, I was able to get back on my feet and somehow adapt to life in the slums. So, unexpectedly for myself, I embarked on the path of a thief. Just like that, and we'll embark on more of our path of being a thief next time. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you then. Bye-bye.